Welcome to the Cop Hinterland! Harbour region is one of the most incredible places you can go four-wheel driving in Australia and that's because of this amazing contrast you've got beautiful beaches over there some of them with big resorts on and then within a few kilometers you're climbing into some of the hilliest hinterland anywhere in the country you could almost say and maybe I should say that Coffs Harbour is the four-wheel driving capital of the country now it all kicked off with the gold miners and the timber getters who came in here 150 or more years ago and they opened this country up they carved tracks in incredible conditions up and down the hills to pull out what they needed in the way of resources and because after that it was taken over by the state forests which is your forests and my forests not like the national parks that means we've still got access to it which is absolutely amazing as far as we're concerned come on let's go and have a look If you're into tough four-wheel driving and epic campsites, then this is the video for you. And I've also got cracking news too. Get 10% off store-wide at Four-Wheel Drive Supercenter. That's 10% off winches, spotlights, and heaps more gear. Just keep an eye out for the exclusive discount code in this video. And of course, enjoy the adventure. Got it, Dan. I might shout myself a new set of multi grips. These ones are 30 years old. Let's just stop the thread in the hub. Right, well, that's it. A little bit of uh, pre track maintenance. It's the studs again. Look at these. They've just chewed out. Um, we had three nuts that were chewed out and three studs. So I've replaced all six. Um, the bits from the nut and bolt place and from Toyota, 16 bucks, I think it was this time around. Hopefully, it'll be all right. It's all this power, you see. Poor old Axel can't cope with the big engine. Hey, come on, guys, let's go. Mount up. And before long, we're heading out. Now, get a load of Kev's 89 model Maverick. He's built this truck specifically for the hills around here. It's got 35 inch tires, four inches of spring lift, front and rear pro lockers and reduction gears in the transfer too. He's running a 4.2 litre diesel, but it's got an aftermarket safari turbo and intercooler. So you can bet that this little number is going to handle some of those back tracks well. Also along for the ride, we've got regular Don Shuring driving the TJ Prado. He's been around as our Don, and he's got the gift of the gab, as they call it. I grew up in Sydney second eldest of nine children and uh, we've lived in the western suburbs of Sydney to Whit Merrylands and I majored in hubcap theft from Granville Patricia Brothers and distinguished myself finally and was followed by uh, the rest of my siblings. Glenn Haddon's back in the mighty 80. I remember just being a young kid and the neighbours always went forward driving and camping. The first time I went that was it. I had to have a 60 series cruiser and uh, always, and I wanted to work on cars. And we've got our young lovebirds, Kirsty and Dan Boswood. Um, I've heard it's the four drive capital of New South Wales, Coffs Harbour. So, yeah, looking forward to getting out and seeing some of their tracks because I've heard they're pretty challenging out this way. I've done a trip with these guys once before, the exact same team, the one up behind Port Macquarie. And you know what? We gelled that well, it wasn't funny. That's what four-wheel driving does for you. You all work together, play together, have some fun together. And in the Coffs hinterland, you can have plenty of fun. There's all sorts of terrain up here. You never know what you're gonna cop. I know it's gonna start quickly, cause Kevy's on the job. Time to let the tires down. And before we even knew it, we'd cross the threshold. Bang, straight into it. Oh, 
Holy dooly cat! Straight off the road and we're straight into it. Yeah, sorry big fella, you know what Coffs Harbour's like, you know. Some say it's a four drive capital of Australia. Look at this. Well, I don't apologise mate, that's unreal. Yeah, I mean, we don't, we don't have the AFA, what are we? Three k's from the highway, ooh, bit bumpy there. Wow! If we didn't have you, I think we'd be stuck. This doesn't even look like a track. Last time I saw something like this, it was in the jungles in New Guinea. <laughs> Oh, I reckon, mate, this could be the Kokoda Trail all over again. Oh, look out, we've got a creek crossing. Wow! You should see this creek crossing. I mean, we're only a couple of hundred yards off a of sealed road. And this is like something out of the jungles of Borneo. In fact, if Kev wasn't in front of me, I'd think it was a, a tiny little walking path. It is that overgrown. Looking good, Kev. That was a metre's worth of drop off. And on the other side, whoops, only exactly one car length wide, uh, straight up. Oh, go red. I might be in the spider pipe. Give it a go. Well, you've just got to have the right tools for the trip, haven't you? And behind Coffs Harbour, that means carrying a machete or a banana knife at the very least. You've got to hack your way through this undergrowth occasionally. It ain't that easy either. Some of these vines have been there quite a while, probably a month or two. I thought Kevin would drive that with his big tyres, but it just goes to show how tenacious these vines and trees are. Anyway, he's done a lovely job of clearing it for the rest of us. Need a hand, Kev! It's all off. Now that's what a patrol's good for. Stick it out the front, let it bash its way through the bush a bit. <laughs> way to go, mate. Hey, this looks like a pile of old railway sleepers. What do we got, Kev? Oh, look at that. Oh, that's a bit of an erosion gully yeah. too, isn't Maybe it? you can go first. We have a challenge, men and women. What it's all about. A bit of traction here with the rocks and um, the chance of a straddle over there. The only worry being that you can bet that as soon as a tile or two's been over that, it'll be very slippery. I bet, you that's, I bet you that's nice and soft in there too. Oh, it would be, eh? So really, really what we need is to be very well spotted. Someone's done it. Look. Mm. And there's marks down there too. So very well spotted. And of course, the alternative is, oh, look at this. Oh, boy. <coughs> Hey guys, if you do make it, <laughs> you get to play in the mud. Holy dooly. Um, okay, so what does that do to you? You do your straddle, you're still going to come out in a good spot. You're going to have to drive it as soon as you get to the top. Yeah, well, this, yeah. Oh, well, this will be fun. And you know the best thing about it? You're going first. <laughs> <laughs> cool, let's go play. Kev's up first and he's all concentration. Although he's got the best weapon for the job and he's going through first. So come on, mate, show us the way. Show us how it's done. It's all about getting the wheels in the right place with that huge gutter in the middle. Right on, Kev. Right on, mate, beautiful job. Spot on, let's see you drive this next bit. Wow, that was 
is a uh, really good bit of work on the wheel there. Let's see the other boys can do that. Well, I really hope I can make it look as easy as that. Um, disadvantage is that uh, it's a bit chewed up now. There's a bit of water in the mud. Advantage, I know it can be done. Kev had his wheels in exactly the right position. Um, let's go and see what happens. Come on, Jack, ready for a bit of fun? Always, he says. Whoa! Oh, here we go. I've got a narrower track than Kev. So this is a bit critical for me, but we'll see what happens. I'm looking forward to it, it's gonna be fun. Come on, Red, let's see if we can get up there without digging it up. I'm just going back like a stage. Go the old girl, that's the way. Oh, Jack, you don't even look worried. Ooh, listen to that V8. Isn't that beautiful? I'm trying not to chew the track up. I do, John. Hi, Tom. What uh, surprised me, I only used my rear locker because I didn't want to chew it up too bad. And um, also because I wanted to have steering, which is a bit optional in the red truck once that locker goes in. So what really surprised me was that I didn't have to give it the berries to get up this thing at all. Cool, John. I'll be conservative. Yeah, yeah. I think the whole trick, I mean, I watched Kev really close and the whole trick seems to be crawl up this bit here. And once your back wheels, you know, once the car's leveled out and you're over the hump, then you might have to give it about a quarter to one third berries to get through the mud. But just point it straight ahead, don't worry too much, and give it just a little bit. And uh, you should sail straight up. The important bit is setting up this bottom part. So uh, come up real slow and we'll work it from there. Lovely, thanks John. No dramas, mate. I think you'll enjoy this. I do too. Okay, mate. Just slow down a bit. Slow down. Just go real slow. Okay, Bob. Hang on. Then low range first, maybe, because it looks like it's low. Yeah. Okay. Um, rear locker on. Just checking, mate. <laughs> okay, now, at this stage, you just want to go left hand down. What? That's about the right line. Just see if you can hold it there. We'll see what happens. Come real slow. Oh, no, don't. Um, go back. Okay, well, got to come slow. A little bit of left hand down, mate. You've kind of... This is where you should be aiming. Okay. Extension strap to the top, 
and we'll give you four. Well, there's nothing complicated about this recovery, other than the fact that we've got to go a long way to get a decent tree. Probably right. the most important thing is the direction that you're pulling in. It affects a whole okay, lot of things. Kev, can you slide that blanket down to this side of the hook? But in this case, we're using red at the top, we can get the angle exactly right, and it's dead easy. Guys, just hang on, I'm going to take up the tension with the truck. OK, you're under uh, tension there, Bob. So um, keep the wheels fairly straight and uh, drive gently and we'll see what happens. The biggest worry I've got here is that Don's going to find traction, launch forward and chew up my rope. Well, they give it some now, mate. We're under lots of strain, give it some. But we've done this a few times now, so he's pretty much aware of that. Just watch your tight turning there. That's cool. And there we have it. Where Don came unstuck, and it's not Don at all, it's, it's, it's the Prado. It's not that high, and it's got a low overhang. And it was just the wrong wheelbase and size for that second bit of mud. So right when he should have been getting maximum traction, he couldn't because the Prado was playing mud anchors on him. Dan, you copy? Yeah, you got you, John. Mate, um, in your favour, you got extra width, extra height and extra length. Uh, all things which stop Don. Against you, you've got the fact that a bit of porridge here just over the slope has now been stirred up by three trucks. And uh, trust me, even baby bear wouldn't eat this mess. It's horrible. Alrighty, here we go. Gee, Kirsty looks worried about banging up the family truck. Come on, Kirsty, you can still drive it down to the shops with a few scratches in it. Beautiful, beautiful. Right, give it the mungos. And with a big right foot, Dan and Kirsty launch it to the top. <laughs> well, you can very plainly see what happened there. Don left nice big slipperies to about the 25 foot mark, and Dan's just added another five to ten foot of slipperies after that so we have now effectively made this really hard and we've still got to get Glenn up here I'm going to go a little bit more to the right hand side because the, um, the track that everyone else has been using is getting very greasy and a little bit chewed up so I'll go a little bit more to the right I'll get a bit of traction with our grasses I've wound the throttle up to about 1100 rpm first DOA range go have a crack out of that Come on, Asbury, you can do it. Just fly it up there, mate. Give it the berries. This aid is just a proven weapon, isn't it? Look at that thing. Whoa, those wheels are going a lot quicker than the truck is. Come on, Glenno, work it. A little bit of steering side to side, that's the way. Look at that. That's where I got the name, right foot cowboy. <laughs> That's you, mate. Travel up behind cops? Well, a chainsaw can be real handy because there's branches over the road and there's firewood to chop too. But I'll tell you what, throughout it all, the wildlife up here is just fantastic. This is Mother Nature's home and we're just visiting. Sometimes the best thing about four-wheel driving is getting to the camp at the end of the day. Righto guys, time to crack open a can and relax. Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with incredible deals on Adventure King's camping and outdoor gear. Take your camping experience to the next level with the amazing Grand Tourer Mark III aluminium rooftop tent. The rooftop tent that practically sets itself up. King's portable gazebos are built ultra strong with a tough steel frame, are easy to set up even by yourself and are available in multiple sizes for the campsite or the job site. 
the incredible new 270 degree freestanding awning can be set up in just 40 seconds and wraps around the side and the back of your car for incredible amounts of shelter. Hit the water on a King's inflatable stand-up paddleboard for an insane amount of fun at the beach, the river or the dam. But warning, it's highly addictive. Plus there's fridges, solar panels and more to make every adventure incredible. At 4 Wheel Drive Supercentre, you get more for less. Whenever you travel in a group, you end up with different dynamics. But well, we got really lucky on this trip. Everyone's great and we're all getting along really well. Oh boy, it just makes it. I think being on the trip with Ruthie was an adventure, but Don's just a bonus. Like he is just, he's just <laughs> hilarious. The one line is that Don throws out yeah. there. I, I've never laughed so much. My sayings tend to come from a different age. When I was getting bored up, a lot of it was uh, directed at, or directly from Cockney, rhyming slang, plates of meat, feet, meat pie, eye, dead horse, sauce. So that's, that's some of uh, the repartee I have. The other is just, I think, a natural genius. The line from this trip appears to be, ho, 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 how long's this been going on? <laughs> and it didn't take long for that line to catch on, let me tell you. Ho, 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 how long's this been going on? <laughs> how long's this been going on? <laughs> how long's this been going on? Ah, oh, just one of those things that doesn't have to make any sense, but gee, it catches like wildfire. That line sure got a good workout, especially after a few drinks. Hey, Kev, what do you got in store for us today, mate? Mate, this place up here is called Bucca. Aboriginal word means bendy. Right, and, um, oh, look at the truck's got to get bendy down here too, eh? Got a bit of mud down here. Oh, okay, bendy mud. Well, I can't wait to try that out. I hope it doesn't bendy any of the trucks. Nah, uh, you'll be right. Ooh, sometimes it just looks horrible, doesn't it? Get a load of that. What's your approach on this, Kev? You've done this before. I'm sort of worried about all these marks here now. Someone's been bogged here. <laughs> Yo, obviously. There's some marks here. I think people have been bogged from one end to the other. Yeah, it's not nice, is it? What are you going to do? Middle? Yeah, I'll, I'll drop down through the centre. Um, right on. That's, yeah, big as, big as the mud's been squeezed out, I'm just going to stay in the centre, mate. Well, I'm going to watch how you go, and then I'm going to try that far left-hand bank just on the off chance, I mean, might be able to grab traction there, but might tip over too. Let's go your hardest. Oh, oh, I think we're into it. Blockers are on. Ooh, it's oh. just pushing slop, Kev. Yeah, copy, Ruthie. I'm stuck, mate. Well, I wasn't in my truck to hear Kev tell me he was stuck, but I sure could see it. Nothing that the mighty TJM 12,000 pounder won't pull out. Even here, a good 10 metres away from the, from the bog hole in front, it's um, slippery as. My truck just sort of went down about three inches as I drove up here. The mud just came squishing out from underneath it. This is funny, because there's been a little bit of sun, it's got that thin crust on top. It's like one of those clay pans out west. Up, yeah, taking it up. Doesn't take long to get Kev out. But by crikey, is it sticky. I can actually feel the suction. And as I pull him out, the car's slipping sideways. His car's slipping sideways. Mine's slowly slipping down the hill. That's one of those recoveries where we're pulling each other together. I think we started with a bit of a gap. Okay, stopping. Ooh, look at that slop. Thanks, big fella. <laughs> no dramas, mate. What are you going to do, Kev? Are you going to try that other line? I will. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just bump across to the right-hand side, probably about 15 feet. And um, I'm sure that'll make a big difference, yeah. So your number plate is it, Kev? 
It is my number plate. <laughs> How many number plates is this old school? I think this is number five that we found. Well, apart from the uh, Maverick badges, that's the toughest truck here. 35s, a little bit shorter, double lockers. And she just went straight in. No go any further. It's going to be very interesting for the rest of us. Kev tries the different approach over on the right hand side. See if there's a bit of traction over there, mate. Yeah, it's certainly a lot better, isn't it? That's a way lot better. Gee, just about walk through. Might as well put the seatbelt on, could be falling out in a minute. I want to try something a bit tricky. I want to go that left line, see if I can lob traction the whole way through. When I hit this, Leno, I might knock you over. <laughs> OK, I'm going. Just made it. <laughs> and that's how you do it. Yes. And it looked too easy. Sheer luck, of course. Come on, Don. Showing you how. Just go for it. Whoa! <laughs> Dan and Kirsty go the right-hand line, and they clean it up too. That's definitely the bigger tyre line. Ah, oh, beautiful. And that leaves has been, and he don't care. He's just going to boot it through no matter what. Whoa! Only just, Glenno. This hole just demonstrates how crucial the right line is and how unlucky you've got to be to be the first bloke in to find out where it's really sticky. But we've done it, we can move on, see what else we've got. We can bypass the main track and we can go and do some off camera routes with a bit of mud and um, how about some ruts, eh? Oh, sounds awesome, mate, that's what we want. Mud, ruts, all good, let's go. This track's turned bad. You're kidding me, mate. You should see what's up ahead. <laughs> this is serious ruts, eh? Holy dooly. Looks like the earth just opened up in front of us here. Yeah, I'm just going to stop here for a sec and just put the locker in, eh? It's, um, it's that bad. Oh, well. There's only one thing for it. Locker's on. Let's go. Hey, Kev. Time for a quick oil change while you're here, mate. Ooh, looks a bit fally fally. Yeah, big fell on through that bad section. I see what Kent was on about. There appears to be some reasonably serious ruts in front of me. Of course, the big trick with ruts is always to. Um, Try and keep your wheels on the high bits, but that's not always the case, is it? Ooh, Red's getting that sinking feeling. Gee, how many times have I seen the ground too close to that window? Come on, old girl. Where are we? How close are we? Come on! Well, I seem to be on a little bit of an angle. The inclinometer is off the dial at 45. When you're on an angle like this, the only thing stopping you falling over is the bank on the other side. <laughs> Feels a bit weird driving like this too. I'm trying to make myself a track here, you know, work the sides down a bit, build it up on the low side. It's just not really going to happen though. All I'm thinking is we can use a little bit of this collapse in our favour. So I have a feeling there's a big whoops moment in this. Because you never know unless you have a go. This could be the dumbest thing I've done in a while. After I got married anyway. Now the whole plan here is to try and collapse the side a little bit to build it up. Don't know if it's going to work. The dirt across. The Boy, am I glad I've got those sidebars, I can tell you. I'm going to be leaning onto them in a minute. Hey, Kev, it's not the wiggles, mate. And one good thing about not having power steering is you feel absolutely everything that's going on, especially when there's a wheel in the air. It's a 
big ruts just off to my left. I want to slip in there. This looks a little bit scary and technical. And some very, very deep stuff there that I think I'd better stay away from. That's a big hole. If you look to the right, you can see the old siding. This is the old timber top area. There used to be a, um, a train track that used to run between Dorigo and Glen Ray. Uh, built turn of the century. Um, they pulled off the last steam engine about uh, uh, 1958. Um, there was a room, there was still a couple going around in the late 70s, but um, it's abandoned now. Geez, it would have been a big job putting this one in though, eh? Places like this, they just ooze with stories. 85 years before, at this same timber top station, a local timber getter just about lost his life. A heavy log crashed into his leg, and if it hadn't been for the train driver and the guard who tended him, he would have been dead. Good stuff, and it all happened right here in the bush. What a jungle down here, isn't it? Oh, I reckon, Kev, this is as dense as it gets. Yeah, I don't think I'd like to be out here after dark, like you'd lose your way. Mate, it looks like in oh, the last few weeks we've had a bit of a tree come down. I think you better come on over and have a look, eh? Um, not, no, it's not pretty. Oh, go on, you could get across that. Oh, wow. Maybe not, eh? It's a big fella. <clears throat> What's happened here? This has just fallen over. I'd say with um, all, the, all the weather we've had, and it's just old, it's just big. What do you reckon, Kev? This is a bit big to uh, to do much else other than... Drive over it. <laughs> you know what? We just about get over there. The only problem is if you slide off the end of it, you know, you get halfway up and go, uh-oh. I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what we should do anyway. We should get you to drive over it, Kev, so we can all laugh. I mean, watch. Oh. And then we'll see where we go from there. Oh, I've got to get some bigger tyres. Well, I reckon old Red's going to have to have a go at that too. Ooh, close under those battery brackets. Too easy. Oh, my bum. Ooh, thank heavens Don's got those TJM plates under the Prado. Oh, oh. And the big patrol just walks over as you'd expect. Nothing a bit of suspension and tyres can't do. Hey. I can see the XTS Gold in all its detail there, Don. Working the trail. Look at that for, look at that for our kick. Next up is a severe rocky incline. This is the last challenge of the day, and if we can get through this, it'll be a nice, easy track all the way to the campground. The first thing I notice, though, is the ruts. This is one of those tracks the Coff region is renowned for, and it's the reason that Kev is running big tyres. Oh, I don't have a good feeling about this in the old red. Oh, look at that. Kevy makes it look like a walk in the park. Right, well the best thing I can do is plan a bit of an approach that doesn't involve those ruts and see how long it is before I slip in. You never know, might get through. I've tried one side, I've tried the other side, and then I'll try the middle at full speed. Um, what we're going to do, Kev, uh, 
We're going to winch it, mate. Um, we'll probably have to winch me and the Prado just through tyre size. I think um, possibly the 80 and the GU should get up, but we won't know till we've done it. that sound. Okay, going in. Now we pick the biggest tree around, the one that looks the most solid and that's still alive, put a tree trunk protector on it, and that's me. I'm set. I wanted to put it slightly to one side so that I could pull the truck slightly out of the ruts at the same time, maybe drive a bit more of this than winch. It's only one little spot I need. Oh, I tell you what, it's great having Dan and Glenno on the team. A little bit of fitness makes all the difference on these sort of hills. Blokes like me, ha, we can just lie around and be the wheel chops. We're actually a bit stuck at the back here, but we'll just see if the old Red will pull herself up on the front locker. Come on, Red, you can do it. Yep. Front locker country all the way. Good boy. Exactly what I wanted. Oh, might as well collect some firewood while we're at it. In my years of travelling and selling earth moving equipment, I've been to many mines in Australia. Everybody drives four wheel drives. The only thing we do is when we meet these challenges, is go around them. Spend 40 years doing that and then try and spend three years doing it. Yeah, Don makes a good point. I mean, I spent most of my life avoiding all the horrible tracks, the places I might get stuck. And now we come out and do it just for fun. Mind you, it really is good fun, especially in good company and with great trucks to do it. This is a clear case of bigger is better. I got uh, 31s, honest 31s, those Vicky Thompsons, and I diffed out completely. Um, Donnie's got probably 32s, similar, and uh, same deal, you know? Now, the other guys, the 80 series and the GU, Dan and Glenn, they're both running 33s and uh, I think they might be able to make this. Up at Cox I'm hoping that there's a track here that maybe I can have a go at. I was watching all the other cars go up and I yeah, got a little bit of an itch. I asked Dan a couple of times down at Port Macquarie and he said, no, I'll do this one. You drive this car all the time, you should know it better than me. <laughs> I drive it on the bitumen. <laughs> never, I've never driven it, actually, four wheel drive. I don't want to cause any damage to the car. If you stall it, just a brake. Yeah. Because I don't want to end up... Over the mountain. No. Me neither. Now, this is an exceptionally hard bit of track. It's just been a driver change back in the GU. I don't know what's happened back there. Kirsty said to Dan, I'm taking the wheel. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go and drive it. Yes, yeah, just don't worry about any throttle. <laughs> oh, this is dangerous. <laughs> Come on, guys. Oh, yeah, he's got to take a bit of good clutch control here to take off. But you're on a little bit of high ground there, you should be able to get a bit of momentum to... Then you've, then you've got this track nailed. Go, Kirsty, go. Oh, oh! Yeah, I need some power. How's that? The women driving. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, here's a woman, mate. How did that feel? I heard a big scream. That was exciting. I think I've been kicked out of the seat now. You've been kicked out of the drop. Mate, just go back to doing recoveries. You're good at it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, very good. Well done, well Kirsty. That felt really good. And um, apart from showing that girls can drive as good as boys anytime, that also shows what an extra two inches of tyres can do. Oh, I'm not wrong, mate. Yeah, you just had a little bit of tyres. A little bit of extra tyre. Yep. I won't even mention that it's on a patrol. Quality, mate. Quality. 
It does help having the coils up there, but um, that was good. Good drive, mate. Well done. I wonder if Dan will ever get to drive his truck again. Probably not. He had a grin on her face like SpongeBob SquarePants from one side to the other. In Speedway, your foot hits to the floor the whole time. You know, it's how fast you can go, how hard you can rev the car. You know, you're bashing into things if you had to to get past. Everyone else is up. Isn't that amazing? 31s, 32s. 31s got stuck, 32s just got stuck. 33s just made it. I'm on 35s. I have no excuses. For driving, it's a lot more, and what would you say? You gotta critique everything. Everything is uh, a lot of close clearances. You gotta really have your mindset on each side of the car. Plus Kirsty's made it up. Not saying girls are not good, but this is the first time she's driven this trip. <sighs> really good challenge, but uh, throttle control does come into a lot of it and um, I suppose being good on the wheel and knowing your truck, knowing where to put your wheel so you don't tip her over. Bigger tyres and fast on the wheel. Come on, Gleno, boot it straight to the top, mate. Articulation on the suspension. Woohoo! There you go, it's the show. Bigger tyres definitely help out ruts. Oh, the country around the Coffs hinterland is just unreal. And when you've got historic places like Glen Ray, oh boy, it just makes it really, doesn't it? I love the feeling of mixing it with the pioneers, even when the pioneers are, you know, a little bit on the bastard side. But there's so many interesting stories in an old cemetery like this one at Glen Ray. Bit of a story here. Stephen Parker was a local resident here at Glen Ray and he was 46 years old. Um, and in 1917, all the young men were away at war, right across Australia. By 1917, pretty much anyone who had two legs and two arms had been shipped off overseas, apart from the guys who were picking up the white feathers. And so that meant that the other blokes had to do the work. So at 46 years old, Stephen Parker was rolling logs over here, because this is all timber country. Glen Ray was settled in uh, 1858 and um, its big resource here was timber because massive trees everywhere. And poor old Stephen, he got crushed between some logs when they were loading them down here at the loading room. Now, the really sad thing about this is that six months later, his infant son died too. Now, we don't really know how that happened. We don't know if Stephen ever got to meet Lewis George, his infant son. But I guess what it tells you in graphic concrete is how hard our pioneers struggled and how hard the people of regions like this had to be just to survive. Those are the stories you get from our pioneers, and I guess that's where our four-wheel drive spirit comes from today, isn't it, hey? I mean, we're right out there doing exactly what they would have loved to have done if they'd had Nissans and Toyotas. After an awesome day like that, it's time to set up right by that pristine Nimboida. Oh, boy, I love this river. Time to crack open a can and have a bit of a relax, and I reckon we deserved it, folks. We really did. The water's pure, the air's just so good it's not funny. The dog's wetter than a pack rat, but who cares? Let's set up camp. This is beautiful.
Now Lauren sent in this recipe for a chicken pie, which I love because it's just so simple. You know, it's simple enough for someone like me to do. And the best thing about it is it's a beauty because I reckon it's gonna travel really well, mostly because most of the ingredients are in cans and because the kids are gonna love it too. Now, the only thing Lauren didn't give us was a name for her pie dish. We've decided to call it Ho Ho Ho, How Long Has This Been Going On Pie? Sounds a bit suspect, doesn't it? But that's all right, it's very easy. I'll just reach into the fridge and grab a couple of ingredients. Now, Lauren didn't mention bacon. Let's just call that a, uh, a Ruthie thing. I like my bacon and I reckon it needs it. How easy is that? Pretty easy, it has to be. With uh, how long has this been going on pie? Not very long at all, actually. Lauren didn't say anything about bacon. But she did talk about chicken. And of course, chicken pie's gotta have chicken in it. So I've got some really nice skinless breast chicken here. I reckon this stuff's the best um, for a whole lot of reasons. Very easy to cut up, very easy to carry, and this is the best part of the chicken anyway. So I'll just wop that up. Um, I think Lauren used the word dice. I'm just gonna cut it into cubes. Righto. Now, bacon's just about done. Pan's pretty hot. Just use the old safety glove here. Now I've actually got this pan running too. The pot. I've got a little bit of extra heat in there. And then we're going to use this one for the chicken. Now, you're probably thinking, gee, why doesn't he just do it all in the one pot? And you could do, I could do quite easily, except for the quantities involved. So if you were making this for your family of, you know, four, five, six, and Uncle Festa makes seven, it'd be easy to do it just in the one big pot. No problems at all. But um, when you really got the multitudes to feed, well, it's easy to sort of get things browned up in the pan first and then lob it in the pot. When you cook chicken, it's really not hard, but it is critical to make sure that it's cooked. You know, you can get away with meat just kind of blacken it on each side. In fact, with meat, you can pretty much eat it raw in a lot of instances. But chicken isn't like that at all. Don't ask me why, I'm not a chef. But I do know that there's a reason why chicken has to be cooked thoroughly or it can make you sick. And you certainly don't want to risk that with a meal that you might be feeding to the kids. Chicken's just about done. It can go in there with the bacon. All the bacon and chicken in there getting all mixed up together. Flavour is going to be out of this wall. These are tiny taters. If you're going to do this with just ordinary old spuds from the shop, no problems at all, they're great. Just make sure you parboiled them. Parboiled means just a little bit boiled. Obviously, tiny taters get steamed into the can, so they're sort of partially cooked straight away. I reckon two cans of spuds, because we've got a few people here. Some tin carrots. Lauren said you can use pretty much any vegetables you want. So I got some corn and peas. There we go. Well, that's looking pretty evil. Lauren, I think you've got a real winner here. But next comes the secret ingredient that just makes this such an easy effort. And that's this. And Lauren specified Campbell's cream of chicken, the condensed version. Now, presumably, that's because the condensed version is stiff. Look at that, that's really stiff. Okay, we'll give that a little bit of a stir now. I think I've said it a few times before, but if you know anything about concrete, you can cook. Guys, it's that easy. At this stage, I'm putting the level on, you know? And if I had a trowel, I could do it really neat. And if I had the edger, I could put an edge around it too. I'll put the lid on. We need to sort out some pastry. 
back into the fridge. Oh dear, might have to climb over a beer to find the pastry. I can do that. I've got some um, puff pastry here. And on goes the pastry. Whoops. You have to glaze it with something to make it look all nice and brown. Put a nice big googie egg in the bowl. Whizzy that up. How am I going, Lauren? Is this kind of what you do, or have I busted too many rules already? And there you have it. How long has this been going on pie? All we've got to do now is put the lid on and cook it. Now, most of those ingredients are already cooked, as you saw. The chicken, the bacon, the stuff out of the cans, it's already been steamed. So really, all we're trying to do now is brown up the top. And that's one of the things I liked about Lauren's recipe, you know, because it's just too easy. You can't really go wrong. It's probably going to taste pretty good. I'll just find my shovel and I'll sort the fire. There we go. We've got lots of coals on top. We'll have a look in about 25 minutes, see what it looks like. Let's see how it looks. Whoa! How long's this been going on? Looks really good, doesn't it? Tell you what, smells good too. Okay, I'll just serve that one up. Okay. Hey. Oh, John. <laughs> You're serving me first. Ho, ho, ho. How, How long's long this been going, going on? on? <laughs> Come on, Don, tell us what it's like. <laughs> Aim at the pie. Ho, <laughs> ho, Probably got to burn his mouth no. now. No? No. Fabulous. Fabulous? Mm, a lot of flavours. I love it. Hey, Lauren. Honest Don reckons it's a winner. And so do I. Simple, easy, really wholesome, exactly what we need in camp food tucker. Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with insane deals on King's DIY storage and 12 volt gear to build your dream four wheel drive. Whether it's an inverter you need to run 240 volt gear on the job site or the campsite, a battery box or a 12 volt control box to easily access your power. King's 12 volt DIY gear is what you need to take your 12 volt setup to the next level. Need a battery? King's has you covered with a full range of AGM, slimline and lithium batteries in sizes ranging from 98 amp hour to 200 amp hour. All built with ultra high quality components to go the distance. And of course you just can't beat King's solar panels and blankets to silently charge your batteries anytime the sun's out. At Four Wheel Drive Supercenter you get more for less. We camped on the Nimboida River the other night, and this is the Nimboida, a little bit further upstream. Now, why have we stopped here? Well, it's really simple, because this is one of those things that really illustrates a point I've been trying to make for a long, long time. People like me, and people like you, who spend a whole lot of time out there in the bush, us four-wheel drivers, we know and appreciate Mother Nature for what she really is. I'm sick of being told by national parks, oh, you can't drive on the beach, or you you can't drive through here, you might disturb the habitat, or blah, or blah, or blah. What a load of garbage. That sort of thinking is from academics in little offices in the cities, or greenies who live in concrete jungles. Because people like us, who get out there and do it, see a whole other side to it. What am I talking about? Okay, back home in Queensland, we've had floods that devastated everything. We've had cyclones that have gone through and ripped out just about everything. Here in Nimboida, in New South Wales, right at this very platform that, I, that I'm at, last time the floods came up real big, 
they were up to here. Now look how far away the river is. Imagine that, the flood plain would have been from here to the mountains, right the way around, the whole valley would have been awash. That is the power of Mother Nature. That, the bushfires, the cyclones, devastating flash floods, that's what Mother Nature's all about. You really think that stopping humans from going in and having a bit of a look around and a camp and maybe a little campfire is anything in the great big scale of nature? No way. So you know what? If you want to show respect for Mother Nature, get out there and have a look and enjoy it. Feel it for what it is. Don't sit in an office and go, oh, we can't let people in. It's just ridiculous, isn't it? Imagine that. Man, I could have jumped over here and gone for a swim. Jack had to run all the way down there for his swim. Oh, I could hang out here all day, but I think we better get going. Come on. Kevy can't resist any little turn off that leads into an almighty track. I call this rock trail because it is very rocky and pretty darn steep. Kev has brought us up a little bush track here. And uh, all around, there are huge trees and stumps. Stumps from even bigger trees. So, presumably this was logged a long time ago. There's a lot of what we always used to call root traps in the mining game, which is um, holes, or ruts in this case, covered up by sticks, bark, bits of timber. We used to call it a root trap because if you did come across a mine like that, you quite often found a dead root or something down the bottom. Um, and of course, here, I guess the consequences are more vehicle orientated. You can drive over something that looks like the rest of the track, but there's a big hole hiding there just waiting to bite you with it. Say, you know, we've been crisscrossing that railway line now for a, a while, and um, um, yeah, this is part of the old railway line between Dorrigo and Glen Ray. The train line we've been crisscrossing all the way was built in the 1920s specifically to haul timber out of the area. In the old days, they didn't have much of a road up to Coffs Harbour. In fact, the best access was through Dorrigo. So they had this train line that ran from down the bottom of the hill up to the top to haul the timber out that way. Hey, uh, my name's David Page, how are you? Oh, g'day David, John Ruth, nice I'm to meet you I'm the Secretary mate. of Glen Ray Mountain Railway, do you want to look in the uh, station? Wow. This is the uh, station master's room. Um, station masters sleep and live in there. Why is this, it looks like a concrete building. It is a concrete building. It's a concrete prefab building. It came with a kit from Sydney. Yeah. The floors are concrete. It sits on railway lines which are underneath us. And the entire building itself um, just came back on the back of a steam train and the, and the goods for it. Wow, well, no, they just, they just dropped it, it off and the, the guy just assembled it. It's amazing, isn't it? You know, look, only the government would use a concrete building when there's all this timber around. Well, the thing too, which upset the locals, that all the timber in this building is Oregon. It came from America. So You're joking. Nothing came from Australia. <laughs> Same from a kit, basically from America. And yet the whole railway was designed to pull all this fantastic timber, yep, timber, timber out. out. It cost a pound an inch to build the track. A uh, hang on, a pound an, an inch. inch to build this line. And how long is it? Uh, 75 kilometres. Wow. And it's paid for wow. itself, no trouble at all. So it was a profitably making line. Closed it in 1972 due to land slippage. Far out. So State Rail could really learn something from the old days, couldn't they? They could make things <laughs> pay for a change.
The Glenray Mountain Railway Group have been trying to get the old train line back up and running. With government funding, they've been able to restore part of the track and are hoping that one day it'll give tourists a unique look into the Coffs hinterland. They've met a few hurdles along the way, but they're still positive it'll happen. Steve is one of the guys helping to restore the tracks. And when they laid this track originally, back in the 1920s, they would have done it all by hand. Pretty much, pretty much. Wow. Yeah. They certainly did it hard. They used to carry um, sheep and pigs and spuds. And oh, really? A lot of timber. A lot, a lot of, timber. of timber. A lot of timber. It's the main reason for it was timber. It must have been backbreaking work. I mean, yeah. but you guys still repair them by hand. Mm. Yep. Backbreaking work? Yeah. Oh, it's good fun. Good fun. Keeps you fit. <laughs> Keeps you fit. How long did it take him, do you reckon, to chuck in the original rails? I think it was about 10 years. I think 10, 10 years. 10 years. 10 years, yeah. 10 years. And what's the weight of steel? They were Maltese fellas. They were little, little strong fellas. Maltese blokes? Yeah, I think the Chinese were all busy on the gold. Is that <laughs> Chasing right? gold, I think. Why doesn't that surprise me? Everywhere yeah. you look, the Maltese are lifting heavy things. That's it. Thanks, Steve. That's no awesome, worries. mate. I'll tell you what. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. And thanks for the offer. I will send Don Shoestring over to help you shift a few of these sleepers. Now we're going to be following the railway line again for a little way, but by crikey, it's not an easy trip. Kev looks a bit sloppy up there in front of you. Mate, I've just pulled up here. Yeah, I know it's um, it's black, it's muddy. It does, mate. Yeah, it's not looking too flash. Hey Ruth, I'm gonna give it a go mate. I'm just gonna see if goes, sneak through. Gee, it's wet up here, eh? Kev, it's wet everywhere. This is the Coffs hinterland. There's a bit of slip happening there, wow. A little bit of traction in that grass or is it just getting choppy? Uh, I've, got, I've got plenty of traction so far. Yeah, there's a few rocks down there. Yeah, it's all right for you mate. You've got the big tyres. What about the rest of us? Mate, I've just come through the first section. You're probably looking at about, um, probably nearly 100 metres. There's some big holes in there. Um, I reckon stay in the rut, so um, don't try and get out of them because you'll just it'll drop in one side and it might get like your dog, a bit ugly. <laughs> yeah, well, that's certainly Jack's job in life. I'm clear, I'll wait up at this flat section. And um, we'll see how we go, eh? Right on, mate. This is a really ugly little bit of mud hole. But there's just a chance that a bloke might be able to straddle the ruts and get somewhere. There's no way the technical approach is never going to work because it's just too soft. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> Sorry, Jack. Holy dolly. Oh, oh, oh. How long's that been going on? <laughs> what is it doing? <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. and a whole lot of petrol, and we got through. A couple of casualties. I don't think Mel's pants are going to be the same. Our producer, she just uh, put on a whole new complexion as far as mud baths go. My tyres are about to get another workout. Good on you, Kev. Pretty soon we're in a totally different sort of country again. This time, it's more base of the hill stuff. Bigger trees, a little bit more spread about the jungle. Hey, copy, Rufy. Yeah, yeah, mate. What's this like? Mate, sorry for slowing down a bit, but, um, oh. Pretty gnarly up here. After all that rain, it's washed out, out all the dirt and um, big rocks up here. I can see your truck climbing. I've just stopped because, uh, I reckon you might kick back a few. She looks a bit ugly up there, does it? Yeah, it does. I, I'm pretty sure I can see a line there, but you know, just one car at a time, eh? Yeah, figured as much. We've got a bit of altitude here. I'm um, pretty good to go. So, 
Wish me luck. Good luck, Kev. Kev's Maverick's perfect for this sort of stuff. 35 inch tyres, six inches of lift. Mate, that's the go. This track used to be pretty easy, but today, I'm gonna try and go this line here. Lockers both ends, 35s, <laughs> and four inches of springs and a couple of inches of body to keep you safe. Give it the berries. the top mate once you get past the rocks you'll come to the uh, sorry you'll have the clay ruts just pick a line as you go don't don't stop just look ahead okay guys don't stop just look ahead yep that's my motto ho ho until we're going backwards anyway I'll just hope the old big red keeps going holy dolly a little bit of air under a wheel there when it comes to rocks about the best thing you can do is keep the diff off the big ones Oh, no. I don't know what my best bet here is. Situations like this, the best trick is to keep more ruck under the tyres than you've got under the diffs. She nearly turned over. And there was a couple of big scrapes from underneath. Hey, honest Don, it's all yours, mate. Okay, mate, here comes one for the grey nomads. What are you going to do, Don? Stop and get your caravan out. Okay, that's good, Don. Oh, you're right up in the air, mate. All the way. Kick out, Don. That was the most exciting run of the day so far. Donnie had uh, three wheels in the air there for possibly a second or more. Um, it, it does freak you out more than it should to look at, Dan. When you go up near the stuff where we are, you'll see the rubber on the rocks. You need to sort of stay on the left. Don't bother turning, just come straight up. Stick your wheels on the boulders that are loose at the front there and you'll be right. No worries. There'll be worries if there's panel damage, because it's cursed his car. That's what we found out. Dan's got the rubber and he's got the suspension, and they got plenty of power too. Oh, I bet you'll be glad to get through this one, mate, to get to the pub. But this isn't an easy track. There's a few places you can really come unstuck. Situations like this, it's all about setting up the line and steering your way through. Hey, Kirst, you're looking a little bit sick there, mate. Bit of a surprise package, wasn't it? There's a loose ghoulie that we just rolled back in. Yeah, thank you. I saw that get dislodged. That's where your right hand wheel goes. Um, your left hand panel is going to be a foot or so away from this tree stump on the left. And that's your position. And when you get here, um, you don't want to be going too fast, but you don't want to back off and the vehicle will actually bounce up rock to rock, won't do any damage, and you'll be up and over. It's kind of exciting, and you can fully figure on having three wheels in the air at some stage. Come on up, mate. Nothing scares Glenno. He takes the early part pretty easy. 1,400 RPM. Rear locker in. I love us. Oh, drive it, Glenno. Look at that. Straight up and over. Well done, mate. Right, pub time. Oh, boy. And that's it, guys. The end of another fantastic adventure. You know what? It's unbelievable that you can have this much fun so close to a big place like Coffs Harbour. I mean, we're just up the road, you know? The old Caramba Hotel, your beauty! It's all here, guys. What an absolute classic. And now we're back in civilization, just 10 minutes away. Ha! <laughs> Unbelievable. Time for a nice cold beer, maybe a pie, eh? What do you reckon, Don?
Oh, boy. I tell you what, you know, great days out in the bush, some great driving, some real adventure, and at the end of it, the camaraderie you get from hanging out with a great bunch of people and doing some great things. Oh, I love it. It's just so good. Tell a few big stories. Wow. There you go, guys. That's the Coffs Coast. And how do you go for exciting four-wheel driving around here? It's been fantastic. Unbelievable tracks, every sort of terrain, some of the hilliest country around. And then interspiced with all that, you've got this wonderful sense of Australian history, the, the railway tracks that tie the whole place together, the hard labour that our pioneers put in. It's all here and all so close to the coast. It's unbelievable. It really is an unbelievable place. We've had a fantastic adventure. We really have. I've enjoyed every bit of it. Some of the best camping in New South Wales too. I'd like to thank Kev, top tour guide. Good on you, mate. Awesome vehicle too. And of course, my mates, Honest Don, you know, and has been. We always have a terrific time when we travel together. And our new friends, Dan and Kirsty. They've been fantastic. They might have won this trip, but they made it for us. There you go, guys. Cheers to all of you. What a top adventure. Forget building your own set of storage drawers or paying well over $1,000 for a set elsewhere. And get your hands on a set of incredibly tough and unbeatable value for money, Titan storage drawers. Our entire range of Titan storage drawers have been built to handle just about anything you can throw at them. All models of Titan double drawers come with an included built-in fridge slide on the left-hand side, saving you up to $200 compared to some other brands that charge extra for a fridge slide. Each drawer top also has these heavy-duty spring-loaded tie-down points to secure your gear on even the most corrugated roads. We've put them through their paces like none other. We've jumped on them, overloaded them with bricks, chucked an engine on the drawers at full extension, absolutely flooded them and used them off-road year after year to prove just how tough they are. The Titan 900 single drawer is perfect for those who have limited space to install a storage drawer. It has internal dimensions of 430 millimeters wide, 790 millimeters long and 190 millimeters deep. The Titan 900 double drawer setup is ideal for smaller wagons like Prados, Pajeros and SUVs with the internal dimensions identical to the 900 single drawer on each side. The Titan 1300 ute drawers are made specifically for vans and utes. The internal dimensions are 1200 millimeters long, 430 millimeters wide and 150 millimeters high. The 1300mm single drawers are also a cracking addition to the back of vans and utes. The internal dimensions are the same as the double 1300 drawers, but have an extra 40mm of depth, making them 190mm deep. And finally, for the bigger wagons like Land Cruisers and Patrols, the double 1070 storage drawers have internal dimensions of 880mm long, 470mm wide and 180mm of depth. They come 95% pre-assembled, and all you need to install them is a couple of basic hand tools and a couple of hours on a lazy Sunday Arvo. You can also add optional wing kits, both model specific and DIY. So you can finish off the back of your four-wheel drive and have plenty of storage available for your next adventure. Take your setup to the next level with the incredibly tough and unbeatable value for money, Titan Storage Drawers. If you're after a next level 12 volt upgrade for your vehicle or your next camping trip, then check this out. The Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. This uses high capacity, brand new grade A lithium iron phosphate cells capable of thousands of cycles. It's paired with a high quality BMS able to output up to 160 amps of current. The future of 12 volt setups is here. Lithium batteries are super lightweight and still have heaps of power capacity. In fact, this battery weighs just over 15 kilos. That's about half as much as a similar capacity AGM. But that's not all. Lithium batteries have the ability to use their entire capacity from 100 to 0% and still have an incredibly long life. The reason Adventure King's lithium batteries are so good is because they use lithium iron phosphate chemistry. That means if you're using the entire 120 amp hours of capacity in this battery every day, it would still last almost five and a half years. Some cheap lithium batteries use grade B or even secondhand cells to keep the cost down, but not here. Adventure King's lithium iron phosphate batteries use brand new grade A prismatic cells. 
When these batteries are assembled, each individual cell is matched with others and then grouped. Then those cells are balanced, which means that these batteries always function at their best and ensure you have full capacity. Another major feature of these Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium batteries is the high quality internal battery management system. This BMS for short takes care of the individual cells. It balances them while you're charging your battery. It prevents overcharge, over discharge, over temperature and short circuits. A high quality BMS is so important and it's also incredibly important to match the BMS to the cells and the use of the battery. A good indicator of a high quality BMS is to look for high current discharge and charge ratings. This battery is capable of charging and discharging constantly at up to 100 amps and it can do a peak discharge of 160 amps of current. A high discharge current and a high peak discharge current are very important if you want to run things like inverters that need a lot of power when they turn on to fill the capacitors. If you're looking at a battery that has a much lower charge and discharge rate, they could be cost cutting by using a cheaper BMS. Lithium iron phosphate is a safe technology, unlike some other lithium chemistries, and Adventure King's lithium batteries are doubly safe. Not only are they sealed and safe to use in your vehicle, they've also passed a short circuit test, overcharge test, over temperature test, and a vibration test, so they're ready to be put to use. Some lithium batteries are extremely sensitive to hot and cold temperatures, and they can be damaged or destroyed by trying to use them. Adventure King's batteries, though, can be charged anywhere from zero to 50 degrees Celsius and used or discharged anywhere from negative 20 right through to plus 60 degrees Celsius. They use threaded M8 terminals for high power output and easy connection. Measuring it at 330 millimeters long by 162 millimeters wide and 215 millimeters tall, they fit perfectly in an Adventure King's battery box for a lightweight and powerful portable power station. And with 120 amp hours on tap, you could run a camping fridge for five or even six days. Or you can permanently install them in your vehicle for a next level, super powerful setup that barely weighs anything. And for that reason, they're perfect for your full drive, motorhome, caravan, or camper trailer, where you need to be concerned about GVM and GCM limits. So if you want a safe, lightweight, super powerful, and super long lasting lithium battery for your next level setup, you can't beat an Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. Introducing the incredible Adventure Kings Premium Camp Oven Stove. Your new best mate for delicious barbecue or campfire cooking and warm, cozy fires whether you're at home in your backyard or at your favorite campsite. Let me show you all the things that I absolutely love about it and I'm sure you're gonna love too. This amazing bit of gear has been designed right here in Australia and it combines a camping stove and a portable barbecue into one. It can run off multiple fuel sources, wood, heat beads, charcoal, briquettes, and more. When it's time to cook up a feast, you can fit two large pots or pans on this huge flat cooktop surface that measures in at 520 millimeters long by 300 millimeters wide. That's enough space to cook up a feast for the entire family. And because it runs on wood or heat beads, you can leave the gas bottle behind. One less thing to pack. And when you want a beautiful roaring campfire, use the included hook tool to simply lift the two piece lid off completely and just add in some more firewood. The raised and closed design means you won't risk scorching your grass, your deck, or even your driveway. And you'll be able to use it for a beautiful warm fire at campsites that don't allow open ground fires. Plus your fire would last longer because you're closer to the heat. Now that's cozy. The enclosed design means it's super efficient and you can make the most of your fuel by directing the heat exactly where you want it. You can even adjust the temperature of your fire by varying the airflow. With these sliding vents on the side, a two-piece removable lid on top and an adjustable flue, you're always in control. Remove the entire lid for an open fire or just this circular inner piece if you need extra heat for cooking, like searing steaks to finish them off. And this up here, now that is a real game changer. A chimney that extends over 2.4 meters off the ground to direct smoke away from your campsite for smoke-free campfires. You can even position the premium camp oven stove under your awning, your gazebo or your shed for maximum warmth. 
and the angular offset chimney piece allows smoke to funnel away rather than getting trapped underneath. There's even a spark arrestor on top for good measure. There are so many more things to absolutely love about the King's Premium Camp Oven Stove. It's been designed to be super sturdy with these four large legs that extend the footprint a foot wider in both directions for excellent stability. The legs simply screw into the bottom like this and you can remove the middle piece for a lower fire. This huge access door swings open with the included hook tool to allow you to easily refill the Premium Camp Oven Stove as required. Inside, you've got this fuel rack that keeps your wood or your charcoal up off the floor, maximizing airflow and preventing wasted heat. It's a breeze to transport, set up and pack down too, with no tools required. Each of the four two-piece legs simply screw together and the chimney pieces pack into each other, with everything fitting into the main body of the premium camp oven stove for simple transport. Make sure you don't miss the incredible genuine cooking accessories available too, like a proper wood-fired meat smoker and a clever barbecue hot plate set to really take your camp cooking to the next level. And a stainless steel water boiler too. Whether I'm at home in my backyard or out camping with family, my mates, or even by myself, I absolutely love my Adventure Kings premium camp oven stove. It's a portable fire pit, it's a wood or charcoal barbecue, and it's the centerpiece of every backyard get together or camping adventure, and I know you're gonna love yours too. Introducing the insane new Adventure Kings nine inch lethal LED driving lights. These things have an amazing combination of both spot and flood light. They have 21,840 lab proven effective lumens per pair. That's over 2,000 more than the previous generation. Plus they have huge light distance performance with one lux at over 1.3 kilometers. These are the LED driving lights that other lights wish they were. You asked and we listened. You said you wanted even more flood of light out of your LED driving lights to light up the sides of the road, the highway, and the tracks. We went back to the drawing board to redesign the lethal LED driving lights to produce exactly that. At the same time, we upgraded the lights to the ridiculously tough King's laser light die cast aluminium housings and three millimeter folded steel mounts. So not only are these some of the brightest LED driving lights we've ever sold, but they're also the toughest. How bright? Try a lab proven 21,840 lumens per pair and one lux of 1,342 meters. That's real world lumens too, not the theoretical lumens that some lights claim they produce. That's thanks to the genuine German designed Osram LEDs for simply unparalleled light performance. We've also re-engineered the lethal lights with a new 5,185 Kelvin color temperature. That means they're just a little bit more on the softer, warmer side. Still a clear, crisp white light, but that little bit easier on the eyes when driving long distances. And of course, you get all the features and quality you'd expect from Adventure King's driving lights, like polycarbonate lenses, the same stuff riot shields and fighter jet canopies are made of, and an IP68 water and dustproof rating, meaning these lights are waterproof to a depth of a meter for an hour. Plus, for the first time ever, they're rated to IP69K. That means they can withstand high pressure jets of hot water. That tough die cast alloy housing features passive cooling fins and a waterproof breather for longevity. And they have the ability to run on both 12 and 24 volt, meaning they're suitable for everything from cars and four wheel drives to trucks and machinery. Including the brackets, they measure 250 millimeters high, 230 millimeters wide, and 115 millimeters deep. They have an attachment system that uses two 8mm bolts on either side to positively lock them in place and prevent them from falling out of alignment. And of course, they use the same plug as all previous Adventure Kings lights, which makes them an easy 10 minute upgrade. Just unplug your old lights, bolt the new ones on, plug them in and you're ready to go. Add in a two year warranty and you've got a simply incredible set of lights that leave the competition looking a little underwhelming. The Adventure Kings 9-inch lethal LED driving lights are the best value LED driving lights on the market. We've re-engineered them to be incredibly tough and incredibly bright. They'll turn night into day, and they're on sale right now for a price you have to see to believe.
you asked and we've listened. The incredible MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer has just received an ATM upgrade to two tonnes. All new Adventure Kings MT1 camper trails will now come with the new upgraded two tonne ATM. But don't worry if you already own an MT1, because a retrofit upgrade kit is available too. The MT1 is already an ultra tough trailer with a one piece 150 by 50 mil chassis that extends right from the drawbar all the way to the back of the trailer. Now it's even tougher with upgraded suspension, bearings, brakes and wheels to bring it up to a two ton ATM. The brakes are upgraded from 10 inch to 12 inch electric brakes. The alloy rims are now rated to two ton ATM and an upgraded set of suspension arms also suit the upgraded ATM. And for existing owners, the retrofit upgrade is incredibly easy to do at home yourself. Everything just bolts onto the trailer with no modifications needed. That extra payload capacity means that you've got more ability than ever before to carry the gear that you need and still remain legal. For more information and full detailed specs on the MT1, see the four-wheel drive Supercenter website. Now with a two-ton ATM upgrade, the Adventure Kings MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer can carry more gear than ever before.